Hi, it's Robin. This is just a short follow-up video from my Guitar Tuner basic optimization tips using the Guitar Tuner as a way of benchmarking the speed of a basic program or the speed of a particular basic program. The last video I got lots of great feedback, suggestions on how to make the program faster, and some of them I was aware of, but I was mainly thinking of ways of optimizing BASIC and not using or abusing some of the features of the Commodore 64 itself. But today we're going to look at some of those ideas or other ways of speeding up your BASIC programs a bit more. So here's the fastest version we ended up with at the end of the last episode. The main tips here are using variables instead of constants for numbers, because they're always quicker. Even faster than a variable, you can use a dot, a decimal point, in place of a zero constant. And we can also go to dot as a replacement for go to zero. And we've got our main loop on line zero, as that is quicker than having a go to further down the program. And we're also going to initialize the variables on line 10, and we're going to do the sort of unusual running a particular line number later, which will then go to the main loop. Let's try that now. And so we've got about 230 hertz. Let's see how we can improve that with some of these suggestions. Just an aside, some people weren't able to use that fine tuner app I had suggested because it, it may be iOS only, or it seems to be only for iOS. If you search Google Play or whatever you like on your Android device for chromatic tuner or guitar tuner, you'll see quite a few possibilities that you can try out. Commenter Bruticus Red suggested using an Android app called Spectroid, which shows the whole audio frequency spectrum and shows which is the loudest frequency. That's probably a good option. My favorite suggestion is from David Fischera, says instead of using go to dot you can actually eliminate it altogether if you have a line zero so let's try that okay it just it gains one hertz we're up to 231 but i did find that very interesting that you can eliminate the parameter all altogether from go to as long as there's a line zero and david who made this suggestion really knows his basic optimization he frequently makes pretty amazing c64 games in just 10 lines of basic i'll put a link to his twitter account in the description below you can see some of his games there but this is a guy who really knows his basic optimization another suggestion is disabling the screen here in the C64 Programmer's Reference Guide, location D011 or 53265, bit 4 of it is to blank the screen to border. If you set it to 0, it blanks the screen. Blanking the screen speeds up the execution of basic programs because periodically the VIC-2 chip has to pause the 6510 CPU because it needs to fetch extra graphics at the beginning of every character row it needs an extra 40 bytes of graphics and then also there's sprite graphics that adds up to a fair number of cycles so that reduces the throughput of the cpu so if you blank the screen you get those cycles back and that's pretty easy to do we'll just poke 53265 peak 53265 and 239, or another way of thinking of that is 255 minus 16, which is the same as 2 to the power of 4. I said it was bit 4 that we have to clear. If you and a byte with 255, it doesn't change it because all the bits stay the same as they are, but bit 4, which is 2 to the power of 4, or 16, if you and a bit with 0, it'll be 0. So this is the way that we take the contents of location 53265 and mask out or clear bit 4. By the way, when we talk about bits, 
we start from bit 0 through 7. They're 0 based if we say bit 4. But if we say the fourth bit, we're actually talking about bit 3, because then the first bit would be bit 0. I guess it can get a little confusing, but watch out for that. If somebody says bit 0, it's the same thing as saying the first bit, because one is a 0 based way of counting, and the other is a 1 based first. I'll just add that go to at the end. There we go. So we were at 231. So up to 247. That's quite a big boost. And to break out of that, we can hit stop restore. Disabling the screen obviously has the drawback that most of your programs, you're going to want to show the user what's going on. But if you have to process something in your program as quickly as possible, you can blank the screen, then enable the screen again and show the user the output. So it can be valid in some programs. Another similar thing we can do is disable interrupts. Now this also has a serious disadvantage in that it stops the keyboard from being read, the TI clock from updating, and other problems, but it does gain a bit of speed. We'll try that now. So that's just another single poke. And this one can be found the programmer's reference guide. Of course, it can be found uh, in the memory map, but it's actually here on page 106 in the discussion on custom characters. And the reason they suggest turning the interrupts off here is because in this particular section, they're talking about how you can copy the character ROM into RAM so you can modify the font. So to get at the character ROM, it's under I.O. space where the VIC and the CIA chips and so on live. So you need to switch them out to show the ROM to the CPU, the character ROM to the CPU. And you have to disable interrupts because the interrupts assume that the I.O. memory is enabled. Okay, there's a discussion of it, page 106 of your programmer's reference guide if you want to read it for yourself. Okay, so we'll try running that one from 247 up to 250. So that's another little boost, disabling interrupts. And fortunately, you can escape from that again by hitting stop, restore. Another frequent suggestion was unrolling the loops. And by unrolling, we mean rather than looping tightly, like do the minimum number of pokes or whatever, do the minimum amount of logic needed in your loop, and then loop again, that's standard programming practice. Instead, you seek to either reduce or eliminate the number of loops by doing every single poke or calculation one after the other in long form. This wastes memory, but you gain speed out of it because you eliminate the overhead of the loop of the comparison, or in the case of just a jump or a go-to without a comparison, you're still eliminating the time it takes for the processor to loop back or go to a line number. Now this is frequently done in assembly language, but it can be done in basic as well. The principle is the same. So we call this unrolling. It's running your program in long form. It wastes memory, but I've, I've spoken before about how there's often a trade-off when you're optimizing. You can either optimize for speed or you can optimize for memory size. Sometimes you can get both, but a lot of the time it's just one or the other. And unrolling is one of the extreme cases where you are using maximum memory, but it's also you're getting maximum speed out of it. Sometimes this is called speed code in the assembly language world as well, especially for demo coders or game coders trying to squeeze the most performance out of their C64. So we'll try this two ways. We'll replace line zero with, this is going to be really tedious. I'm going to fast forward this for everybody's convenience except mine. So I'm doing P shift O is the short form for poke. Think of an episode coming up more about those abbreviations in BASIC. 
but basically we're trying to pack as much onto a single line as we can here. And so we're just going to repetitively type these two pokes, V comma A and V comma dot. Whew. And now we'll list. And here's a curious thing that those abbreviations have now expanded in the listing. And you see that we're actually over the regular 80 character limit, two lines, line length in basic. And this is totally fine as far as executing this code, as far as running it goes, but it doesn't allow you to edit the line again. Everything past the 80th character here will get truncated. So you actually have to type the line over again if you want to edit it. So that's a drawback. <laughs> So we'll see what kind of speed gain we get here. We were at 250. .272. And we can actually take this even a little bit further. It's going to be tedious, but for science or your amusement, I'll do it. And again, I'll fast forward it to make it a little less painful for you, but no less painful for me. So I'm re-abbreviating these. It's slightly faster than typing it in again. Okay, and we can actually squeeze one more of these on, but it's a V comma A, so you see it's a little bit uneven. So the next line will have to make the opposite and have one extra dot at the beginning, poke V comma dot. You see here, this is the extra leftover. I'll just erase that. I'm actually going to do four lines of the speed code. So line zero and two are going to be identical. Then line one we should start with a dot and also end with a dot. And then for line three, we're going to do the same, but the last pair we're going to eliminate and just do a go to instead. Okay, so you see how long our three line or four lines of code are. Line zero, one, two, three. So let's see how much faster that is. Two hundred and seventy-four, two hundred and seventy-five. Okay, and we've got one more tip uh, again from Bruticus Red. I'm not going to go through every uh, the longest version of unrolling this, but just to see its potential, we're going to get rid of lines one, two, and three. And line zero, I'm going to abbreviate again. But instead of using A, we're going to use pi. I mentioned in a previous episode how much faster pi is it's kind of a unique constant where it's just a single character it's actually parsed quicker than a zero or than a variable i think it's parsed about the same speed as the decimal point the dot but it has the advantage of being non-zero so we're going to go through replace every reference to a with pi Okay, so I think that's right. Now this has the disadvantage of being quieter. We're only poking the volume with pi, 3.14, which would get truncated to 3. So instead of being volume 15 and 0, it's going to be volume 3 and 0. So it should be a quieter tone, which is a disadvantage, but in the interest of just gain maximum speed. We're doing everything we can here. So let's try this. So we were at 274, 275 last time. Two eighty seven. Whew. I'm not sure this is a shorter video. All right. So the record now is 287 and you might be able to push that up a little bit more by unrolling. So, I mean, feel free to do that. I'm, I don't feel like doing even more unrolling than I've already done today, 
but you might be able to squeeze a few more hertz out of it that way. It'd be interesting if somebody comes up with another method beyond more and more unrolling to speed this up. So let's see if if anybody comes up with a real breakthrough, I'll make another video about it. Otherwise, uh, this is probably enough of this. I do want to mention one other suggestion was made about using four next loops. So you can do an infinite four next loop with something like for i equals pi to dot step dot and then we won't do the unrolling we're just going to do poke v comma dot next now this suggestion is from stavro Mueller, and so what's happening here is we're going from pi which is interpreted quickly to dot which is the zero step zero so this is like an infinite loop even though it's a four next loop it's because the step is zero it will never reach pi so it will just execute forever and we'll give that a try so even with the screen disabled and the interrupts off we got to 230 hertz which is how fast we had gotten the go to without those uh, poke optimizations here without disabling the screen and, and the interrupts. This is still an okay suggestion. I'm mentioning it because this has one major advantage. No matter where you put this loop, it'll be the same speed. So we could change this to line 100. We'll delete line zero. We'll get rid of the go to. Okay, and I can even add some extra lines in, like just rem 40, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, so I've just padded up the program here so that the for loop is a ways down the list. And now we can just run the program without having to do the run 10. And the for loop is further down the program. Let's see how this does. So you see we're getting 230 hertz, even though the for next loop is down near the end of the program. And that's because the next uses the stack to find where to repeat the loop instead of searching line numbers like go to does. So that makes for next a useful tool if you try and increase your speed uh, without that limitation of moving the loop to the beginning of the program. Okay, maybe that wasn't a short video after all. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody for subscribing. We're at nearly 3,000 subscribers now. Like I've said, I've got lots more video ideas in the works, uh, including some collaborations with other people on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.